it's hard, you know, and it's like you you find success in doing the hard things, you know, and if you could do the hard things well, then you're far better than anyone else, you know, in your peer circle. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today I'm talking to Juwan Platt, who is another videographer here in Savannah, Georgia. And uh, this is actually my first interview with somebody that I haven't met in person before. So I'm excited to get to know you and uh, hear a little bit about your background. So um, yeah, we were just talking, you're, you're in Savannah now. And uh, are you from here? Born and raised here. Born and raised here in Savannah, Georgia. And then you went up to Atlanta for, how long were you up there? Yeah, so I first moved to Atlanta in 2015, um, and then when we started the company Backyard in I think 2016, I was commuting back and forth um, from Savannah to Atlanta, um, and then I officially moved back to Savannah in 2020. So are you back doing, working with Backyard? Is that uh, so, a production company? No, no, no more. Um, so I was running Backyard with three other partners from 2016 to about 2019. Um, mm-hmm. And then I decided to just wind things down and go into consulting. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I was telling you in email that uh, when I first moved to Savannah, I was just trying to see who the other videographers are. And so I, your guys' site just popped up. So I had seen some of your work and, um, and then how do you know Kate from the creative coast? Yeah, so uh, it's interesting because Kate and I interned for the Creative Coast in, what, 2013, 2014, something like that. Um, so before any of um, the amazing stuff that I'm doing now started, uh, Kate and I were interns, uh, and that's how we uh, know each other. And then we just always stayed in contact. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, and no, I love Kate. I love Kate. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, so what's your background like? Did you, what, like, uh, your career and your education and all that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, I guess I could start my senior year in high school. Um, that was 2010. Um, so at the time I was, uh, planning on going to school in Washington, DC, uh, Howard university. Um, I only applied to one school and that was it. And I got in and I was like, all right, I'm out of here. Um, so before I was, before I was deciding to leave, uh, I wanted to just take pictures of everyone that, um, that I knew, you know, in, in Savannah, because I just felt like oh, I was going to leave and I was never coming back. So I wanted to hmm. remember everyone, a uh, very romantic idea of life. And it just, that was not the case. Uh, and it was interesting because I was a painter all of my, um, childhood, so I despised photography. Like I did not see it as an art form. I thought it was lazy. I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, but I stole my mom's digital camera and just started taking photos of just everywhere from school to parties. And I would put it on MySpace at the time. And when I did that, um, I would put dating a yourself. Lo- oh, you're I know, aging, I know. You're aging yourself. Yeah. I, know, I know, crazy, right? <laughs> MySpace. Uh, uh-huh. I talk to young people now and it's like, what is that? But yeah. anyway, <laughs> uh, I would put a logo at the bottom of um, every photo and put it on my space. And at the time, party promoters would, you know, message me or give me a call and say, hey, can you take photos at my party? Um, and I was like, all right, great, let's do that. Um, so I started to like kind of build a brand accidentally, you know. Um, fast forward a little bit. Uh, I did not end up going to Howard. It was way too expensive from what I was trying to afford. Uh, so I spent a year at Armstrong um, and I hated it. Um, and it was really just moving too slow for me. And it's like, man, let's go. Let's get out into the world. Uh, so I became a professional photographer and shot for different uh, regional magazines. Um, and it, I actually did an international shoot where a dance group uh, flew me down to Kingston, Jamaica to shoot photos of them. Uh, so at 19, you know, I was doing international photography. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, so that the time, mostly but, self-taught then. Yeah, like 100%. You just, yeah. Actually, uh, and I don't think I've ever said this publicly, but the only photography class that I took, I failed it. I got a DM <laughs> photography class uh, at Arstra. Uh, so it was super interesting. Um, so 
went into photography, but I realized I was way too passionate about photography. Uh, and what I mean by that is just is I was very emotional about the photos that I was taking. And that's a terrible way to run a business. Uh, so I, I switched career paths and got into communication and design. So just the the center of like communicating a message and how you do that visually. Uh, so I started working with the public school system. Um, and from there, that's when I started to realize that I have to do this for larger companies. Um, so that's a long way of just basically saying um, that from photography, I got into design and communications and marketing. Um, and then that's when I met my partners and we decided to start Backyard. Okay, so you so your your specialty isn't in videography then? Not at all. Not at all. Ah, uh, so, okay. Uh, so, so it's interesting because my partner Donnie, he was the videographer in the crew, uh, and then my other partner Keith, he was the photographer. Um, and actually, the way that we started Backyard was that um, Donnie was shooting was shooting music videos for different rappers in Atlanta. And they would come to him and say, hey, we have $5,000 or $10,000 to shoot a, a great video to put on YouTube. So they would pay him to do that. And then they would put the video on YouTube and they'd get like 18 views. <laughs> so we were like, it would be a lot more advantageous to you and your career. Instead of shooting one great video for $10,000, why don't you shoot 10 one-minute videos that you put on your Instagram? Mm -hmm. you know? um, and, and you would, you will spend the same amount of money. It'll be relatively the same amount of time, but you'll get a lot more bang for your buck. Uh, and of course, you know, the rappers would say, no, I don't want that. I want to be on YouTube. Uh, so instead of taking that idea to rappers, we decided to take it to different companies and corporate. And uh, that was the genesis of Backyard. And and for people starting out, $10,000 sounds like a lot of money. But when it comes to a music video, like there's so many pieces that go in. It's like not that much money. Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. It actually, um, so how was, I think I was like 19, 20 years old. And um, Donnie reached out to a production company in Atlanta and was like, hey, can I love to just PA with you? Um, so he and I drove up to Atlanta and we PA'd on a Young Jeezy video. You know, a 16 hour day. We got paid like $150 or something like that. It was ridiculous. Um, and then we we worked on that set. And then the next day, the production company said, Hey, you guys still in town? Like, we have a future video that we're shooting today as well. Do you guys want to work on that? That was another 16 hour day. Uh, and the only thing like I, we would eat is like Doritos. And, like it was awful. And it, after those two days, I realized I never wanted to work on another music video set another day in my life. You know? uh, so he he went on to continue down that path. I was like, yeah, this isn't for me at all. Uh, so when you transitioned, so you said you transitioned to corporate, more corporate work. Uh, do you specialize in like any type of businesses or any like industries or anything like that? Uh, not really. A lot of my work lately has been in tech. That's just because a lot of um, the world and the market is going that way. Uh, but I also work with a lot of small businesses, you know, that's just trying to get going or trying to understand the digital marketing landscape or how content fits into their um, their overall marketing plans. Um, so a lot of tech right now, but I think that's just because of where the world is going. Mm. So what's your company called now? Or how, how do you yeah. sell your market yourself? Yeah, for sure. So just platinum company. Uh, so right now, I just kind of myself. Uh, I did the the agency life, and I thought it was great. It taught me a lot about the world. Same. Uh, but it, but it made it made me realize that it's like man, I feel a lot better um, as just kind of like a solopreneur and just consultant and advisor to other companies. Uh, I think that's my sweet spot. Um, so just platinum company, and it's Juwan Platt. So a lot of uh, word of mouth and referral, direct referral type stuff, or are you actually like going out and, you know, trying to sell your services? Yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting because it is a lot of word of mouth and referral stuff, uh, but that's really just because I did a lot of outbound early in my career. You know, like I was, you know, sending anywhere from, let's say, 200 to 500 cold emails a day. And just like meeting with people like <laughs> on Google um, meets or phone calls for like 
two, three years of my life. Uh, so a lot of that upfront investment is um, still paying off to this day. Just to get your name out there and so people recognize what you do and... Yeah, a lot of that. Um, but it is also just more so, I guess I was never the type to just let anything come to me, you know? So it was, it, I, I would get anxious. Like, all right, why is this phone not ringing? Right, let me go and talk to someone, you know? So I've always just had that. Um, I don't know if it's a personality flaw <laughs> that I just can't remain patient, uh, but it, it, it translated to my overall marketing strategy. It's like, hey, go talk to people. Like, you know, go learn about what's going on in the world. So, mm. well, uh, being involved with uh, the Creative Coast is probably a good idea, just because that they're trying to cultivate a lot of these tech companies in Savannah, and uh, and yeah, Kate's got you know her finger right on the pulse of what's going on. And Jen Bonet, of course. Um, so, in your career, were there any sort of um, big breaks? I know you mentioned like it's funny because one of the big breaks that you mentioned is just doing those two days of music video shoots for $150 a day. And you're like, Nope, not doing that anymore. <laughs> Were there any like people you met or um, connections you made that were kind of big stepping stones on, in your career looking back? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when I was intern with the creative coast, the executive director at the time was B Wright. Um, so she gave me the shot to intern with her and it was amazing. I learned a lot, um, but a, a bit further down the line, um, B was hired to run the marketing department of Forbes Books, the book publisher arms of Forbes Media. Um, so at the time, that's when Becky was really getting going and um, she hired us to shoot their content. Um, and on on the surface, like, hey, I know these guys, I know they're great, but we also were just the best, you know, at the time, um, we was really, you know, doing some great stuff. Um, and she gave us a shot to work with Ford's books and Ford's media. Um, and that relationship was a two or three year relationship that we had with them. And we flew all over the U S working not only with them, but their clients as well. So we would be in Chicago and we would be in New Orleans and we'd be in Charleston and all over just working with these amazing authors uh, and helping them build their brand through video and photography. Uh, so that one kind of like internship in the Creative Coast turned into an amazing uh, relationship um, that, that I'm still, you know, benefiting off to this day. That's cool. That's a great example, too. Um, and I even have a question later on about uh, internships. So, I mean, you kind of answered it right there. They're worth it. Um, so when you, uh, when a company reaches out to you or you've reached out to a company and they respond, how do you go about determining what they need? Like, what's your process as far as uh, con like their content? You know, how do you approach that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, of course, everything starts with a conversation. It's like, where are you trying to go? You know, like... Um, I think a lot, a lot of companies and businesses and maybe even people, they are, they ask for a map without determining what's the destination, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's, that's key. It's like, where are you trying to go? You know, are you trying to, you know, scale to different geographies? Are you trying to go into different industries? You know, how fast are you trying to get there? You know, what's the revenue mark? Uh, and start figuring out these benchmarks and these KPIs, you know. Uh, and then once we establish what the goal is, then the tactics kind of, you know, reveal themselves. It's like, okay, we need to do X, Y, and Z to get to this goal. Um, so a lot of it is just figuring out what the goal is. You know, if it's a hour conversation, 45 minutes of it just determining what's actually the goal that we're trying to accomplish. And then the 15, the rest of the 15 minutes is like, all right, here are the tactics that we can use to get there. Uh, and then from there, it's about uh, implementing and executing. Yeah, especially with like startups, uh, the, the either the owners, the entrepreneurs or the, the, the top people, like they're so focused on just running the business and building the product yeah. that they're not thinking about the, the strategy. And I heard another, I heard another one the other day that, that I really liked, which is uh, somebody came to me and they're like, I'm not, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm standing on the diving board waiting to jump in. I've already jumped. Now I'm in yeah. the pool. I just need help. What direction do I swim? You know, where Absolutely. do I go? I don't know where to go. So 
So yeah, exactly. So it's our exactly. job to help guide people and say, you know, these are the, the, the things you should do to kind of get you to where you want to be the fastest. 100%. Uh, 100%. So what of your skill set uh, and uh, maybe services you would, we would offer, what would you like to expand in 2021? Oh, that's interesting. Um, so a lot of a lot of my learning when running backyard full time was that we was creating a, a ton of content. Uh, and a big problem that we was having is that the content would just kind of sit in the Dropbox uh, folder, you know, <laughs> on our clients' desks essentially. Uh, so we realized that creation was a big problem, but more of a problem was distribution. A lot of people couldn't focus on how could they scale their distribution of the content, you know, um, and get it into, into as many different platforms in front of as many different people as possible. Um, so in 2021, that's what I focus on with a lot of different companies is figure out, like, what is your distribution plan? Yes, you shot this amazing video. Yes, you have this great one page, but how are you distributing it? How are you getting in front of the right people at the right time so that they can make the decision to work with you or to um, buy from you. Uh, So 2021 is all about distribution and growth. Are you doing any traditional marketing or all digital? Uh, So uh, it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both. Because I think that's the misconception about a lot of the digital marketing is that you still need, you still need that traditional marketing sometimes to get it over the, the line, you know? Uh, because yes, the Facebook ads is going to um, bring about the conversation, but the decision maker is still is going to ask someone else. You know, they're still going to get a second opinion on things, and that's why I think traditional marketing helps out a lot. You know, um, that's where PR comes into play, that's where word of mouth comes into play. Even sometimes flyers. You know, just someone see a flyer, say, like, oh, I, oh, I've seen that company before. Okay, great, I could trust it. Uh, so it's a, it's a combination of both, you know, and it's, it's, you have to make sure you get the perfect alchemy um, depending on what product or service that you're selling. So for you, has uh, how has COVID and uh, the pandemic kind of like affected what you do? Uh, so it's interesting just because uh, in 2018, I, I, I made not necessarily a career switch, but more emphasis on um, the skills that I genuinely like myself, uh, which was the digital marketing strategy design side of things. Um, so although I was running a content creation company, a lot of my work that I was trying to do is figure out how can we like um, scale the operation and make sure that we were not just the, the production team, but a company that could help scale your entire marketing. Um, so in 2018, I switched more to the growth marketing and design side of things. So when COVID hit, I was able to thrive just because a lot of companies needed help with that. You know, they needed someone who understood how to get a um, relative analog product and, and turn it into something that's digital. You know, so a lot of my work was like generating content. Um, getting up new websites and then figuring out the distribution plans for those sites to help them grow. Uh, so it was great. I, um, despite all the suffering in the world, of course, uh, professionally, uh, I was able to do well during COVID. Yeah. I, I feel like, um, all, most people I talk to that are in some realm of, of videography or digital marketing have all kind of reflected it the same way because, uh, yeah, there's so many companies that are now needing to learn how to use Zoom and dial in virtually and create virtual experiences. And uh, everyone, like the joke is that everyone started a podcast in 2020. And I'm like, well, look, we've been doing ours for two years now. So like we were there, yeah. we were, like we've been, us like creative people have been doing this kind of stuff for a while. And so now it's kind of helping our business because we're helping bring other people into the fold and learn how to do things virtually. Um, so do you think people 
so a lot of, uh, uh, I'd like to hope that a lot of listeners of this podcast are young people that are starting out in their career. Um, so for them, for like 17, 18 year olds that want to get into this kind of career field, what's like a good place to start right out of high school? Is it to go to college or is it to just start doing it on your own? Or is it to do the agency life for a while? Like, what do you, what do you recommend? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's interesting. Um, I think about this question a lot. And basically, it's like, right now, I'm 28. So um, I'm thinking about like, what would I have told my 18 year old self? Um, and basically, when I was 18, I was trying to decide if I wanted to do photography full time, or if I wanted to stay in school. And I've now that I'm 28, I should have just done both, you know, should have pursued photography and pursue school at the same time, you know, uh, instead of trying to um, choose between this false dichotomy, if I really was that good as I thought I was, if I really was that smart as I thought I was, do both, like pursue both at the exact same time. And it's going to stretch you. You're going to have to get very creative and resourceful. You got to be able to manage your emotions. You have to focus on your health. You have to do all of these things to be great at both things at the same time and it's a nearly impossible task and that's why it's worth it you know because it's it's hard you know and it's like you you find success in doing the hard things you know and if you could do the hard things well then you're far better than anyone else you know in your peer circle um so what i would tell you know people is do not think so linearly but think more serially like how, what can you do um, that that you can do at the same time, you know, that you could do um, parallel to each other and try to grow both things at the same time? Because what you will find is that you're going to enjoy one thing a lot more than the other, you know. But now you have data to back up, you know, what you genuinely enjoy. You know, you don't have that wet if because you can try both at the same time. Uh, so I would tell anyone, it's like, try two or three things and try them all at the same time so that you have actual data to back up your decision on if you decide to drop two or three um, or, or just focus on one. I mean, it goes back to the music video example. Like it's, it's sometimes it's easier to figure out what you want to do by figuring out what you don't want to do. 100%, 100%. You know, uh, I think a, a lot of, um, diet and then finance advice is basically is like do less you know it's like if you eat less exercise more you'll be fit you know if you spend less and make more you have money you know a lot of these things are, are fairly simple so um in your career path it's like yeah do more and whatever you like keep on doing it what you don't like stop you know and i think uh, that advice would have served me uh, well when i was younger yeah. You don't, you don't really, when you're young, you have to say yes to everything to, to, to learn and to meet people and do all that. But as you get a little more established in yourself and in your career, you have to learn to start saying no to people. And it's like, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it, and it's yeah, a good feeling sure. when, when you can, when you have enough clients that you can like turn some away, that's like a really solid feeling. You, know, yeah, you don't have to do absolutely. everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I still get asked to shoot weddings since I mean, I've been shot Same. a wedding in almost 10 years. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you still think of me. Like, do not get me wrong. I don't matter. But yeah, you wouldn't want me shooting your wedding now. No, <laughs> like, not at all. There are other people out there that special a lot better, it. a mm -hmm. lot better than me, for sure. For sure. So I see the whiteboard and the, um, the, the, the paper in the background. What are some tools you use to stay organized uh, with so many things going on? Oh, man, I'm terrible at organization. <laughs> I'm terrible. Uh, but a lot of my stuff is analog, like just simple pen and paper, you know, just the feeling of writing something down, being able to focus on that paper that's in front of you. I think a lot of times with digital tools um, is so many, so much functionality, so many features. Uh, not only that, you have different tabs open that it's like just sitting down with a blank piece of paper, you know, or, or a whiteboard. Um, is the simplest thing that you can do, something that you can visualize and focus on. Um, so that's always, that's my go-to. Um, and then you got to also think about what you have to focus on what's best for you. You know, you got to continuously focus on what's best for you. So uh, some other person may want this fancy project management tool and you may try to, um, you may try to like 
mimic that person, but it may not work for you. So figure out what works for you and then just stick with that. You know, the tool that works for you is the best tool, whatever that tool may be. Yeah. And it's, I, I think a lot of creative people struggle with the type A organization. I myself included, <laughs> you can tell, I mean, I, I've got my stuff hanging up finally, but uh, it's, it's a struggle for sure. I bet, uh, I bet. Do you have any other, um, do you still paint? Do you do other creative, do you have any other creative outlets? Oh, man, it's interesting. COVID made me realize how boring I am. <laughs> you know, like it's, it made me realize, man, I need to find some hobbies. You like, can learn to make geez. bread. Uh, I did not <laughs> learn how to make bread, but I can say the three to five months that we were like severely locked down, I cooked more in those months than I've ever cooked in my life. You know, like I've I cooked pretty much everything possible. Uh, so I did a lot of cooking during quarantine. Um, just a lot of reading. Um, so honestly, I, I create so much for a living that when I have time to myself, it's like, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> like, let's watch TV, you know, let's, let's do something very simple. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, not really, no real creative hobbies besides just a lot of reading. Like, I do a lot of reading. So, uh, what is it about Savannah that made you want to come back? Uh, it's interesting. Um, they have so many different things. One, the food is great. Um, the the easy living of Savannah. Uh, when I was in Atlanta, it would just hustle all the time, like getting from point A to point B. Uh, Savannah, I was able to just like really like chill and like really think about what I was trying to do. Um, my family is here. So that's one thing when I was like really like flying all over the U.S. on a plane every other week, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time with my family. Um, and I, I think as I'm getting older, I realize like that's super important to me, you know, like being close to my family is something that great. That's great. It gives me energy. Uh, it makes me more creative. It makes me more imaginative. Um, so I need to be close to the source, you know? Uh, so it, a lot of, it was more so a lot of, um, intangible things that drew me to Savannah. I, uh, I'm not from here either, but I visited one time and I was like, I knew I wanted to go somewhere South and, uh, I went, I drove all around Georgia and I came to Savannah just one time. And I was like, all right, this is where I'm going. Hey, so, this is it. Fisher, where yeah. are you from? Upstate New York, Syracuse. Okay. Syracuse, okay. New York. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's interesting um, to, I guess, to go back to the top of the story. Um, although I only applied to Howard University, Syrac Syracuse University gave me a full ride scholarship and I turned it down. Uh, and I was, I was super interested and I did not remember that story until, um, my mother told me probably about a year or so ago. Uh, so it's interesting because I would have been in Syracuse, you know, uh, if, uh, Howard did not accept me. It's a great school. It's just, uh, for me, it's just so cold in the winter time. Yeah. And me being born and raised in Savannah, I'm not used to the cold. <laughs> it doesn't really get cold here. So, uh, I, I don't think I could have survived. Tell me one more time. How can people find you? Are you open to people connecting with you on social media? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not as much of a social media guy as I used to be. Uh, when I was running for um, backyard full time, we had a full time videographer just follow us around. So it was all day, every day, social media. Uh, so once things wind down, I was like, yeah, I'm off of social media. Like, uh, But yeah, I, I still love to connect with people. Instagram, Twitter, it's at Juwan Platt on everything. Um, you can email me, juan at plat and dot co. Um, so, yeah, I love to just talk with people. And if you see me around, we could, you know, come to the office or Zoom or whatever. I love meeting everyone. So in uh, upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to other artists and creative entrepreneurs uh, to help discover their paths to, to success. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to leave us a good review. If you have suggestions for guests or episode feedback, you can send it to wecreatetruth at gmail.com. And you can visit us at creative-truth.com to learn more. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.